main reason America says it's still in Syria is out there in the cold dust that hides the remnants of ISIS. Over the years, berms like these have slowly pinned ISIS down into smaller and smaller territory. Their last sliver of desert there on the Syrian-Iraqi border, where possibly their leader, Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi, could be hiding out. But in this last stage of the fight, the problems and indeed the enemies, the Syrian Kurds here and their American allies face, continue to mount. Last night, another new enemy emerged near here. Tanks and 500 militants loyal to the Syrian regime advanced on and shelled American commandos and their Syrian Kurdish allies not far west of here. U.S. warplanes and gunships killed a hundred of them. The rest fled. What on earth just happened last night and why haunts the U.S. Special Operations Commander? I guess I am a little bit surprised. Um, whoever that was um, knew that the SDF were in defensible positions and, and knows that they're a fierce opponent. Does your head begin to spin occasionally when you just look around going, where do the enemy stop and where does the good news begin? It, it can be complex out here if you try to take into all those factors. The good thing about being in the military is that we usually have a military mission, and our military mission out here is to defeat ISIS. When that attack began, this Kurdish commander rang a Russian military monitor meant to keep the peace here to ask what was happening. He told me there were no movements, he says, and then that they were happening without their permission. An hour later, he rang and asked for a ceasefire. It's strange. Russia is a great power and knows about any move from the regime. They bear responsibility for yesterday. Kicking ISIS out of Syria and Raqqa below has left a vacuum, but also devastation. Nobody knows how many are buried under the rubble below. Yet the U.S. is trying to help rebuild, to clear the endless mines ISIS hid in even toys or refrigerators, and paying for new local police lining the streets. Well, that's one of the contradictions you're dealing with. You want people to come back, but you also have to accept that it may not be safe for them to Absolutely. do so. At the same time, you want to help, but at the same time, you know you can't stay here forever. Um, at the end of the day, are you worried people are going to end up blaming the U.S. if this place isn't rebuilt in a heartbeat? We've learned lessons the wrong way to do this, and I think uh, that we are doing a very good job of making sure that everything we're doing here is through the, the Raqqa Civil Council, working to make sure that everybody appreciates that it's the governing body here that is dictating and, and providing the, the guidance for whatever we are doing to try to help. ISIS surely never expected to have U.S. commandos touring their execution amphitheater or even ordering 20 chicken kebabs on the street here. The message to the outside world, it's safe enough to come and help rebuild. I was the first person to reopen here, he says. We need basic services, water, electricity. I had three mines in my own home, but the local council removed them. Life is rushing back here because no one can wait for the rubble to be cleared, the mines to be gone. So ignored and desperate, these people once let ISIS's horror in. Now they urgently need something better, so it never returns. questions really there about the US presence don't have easy answers. They don't want like Iraq and Afghanistan to own the problem perpetually of rebuilding the ruins of Raqqa and at the same time too they obviously don't want to disappear and leave a geopolitical vacuum there to some degree but it's that extraordinary episode 48 hours ago where there appears to have been uh, perhaps according to some US officials with the knowledge of Russian military contractors and the Russian government pay perhaps with the knowledge of Damascus some bid extraordinary in its size and armor, 500 militia and tanks moving on a position which surely they must have known owing to the amount of information the Russians and the Americans there exchanged between each other contained American Special Forces commandos. They were rebuffed, but the vast amount of firepower was used, warplanes and a C-130 gunship causing 100 casualties. At this point, the Syrian government's called that uh, counterattack from the Americans' aggression. That's been echoed by Russian lawmakers, but interestingly, the Russian Ministry of Defense have said that, in fact, 
those militia, pro-regime militia, heading towards that outpost. It was eight kilometres inside territory long controlled by Syrian Kurds that they were, in fact, chasing down mortar fire that they thought was from ISIS, the Russian Ministry of Defence, saying that they weren't aware that was necessarily going on. It's a bit of a mess, but it really shows you, frankly, that while the US came here to fight ISIS, it now sometimes finds itself fighting pro-regime forces because they move into areas they think they control, and even further west, too, it finds itself on a front line with these same Syrian Kurds facing off against Syrian rebels that are backed by its NATO ally, Turkey. If you manage to follow that last sentence there, then well done. But that's the nature of Syria's war right now, and that's where the United States finds itself. Commandos who were hunting ISIS are now in this broad role where reconstruction, to some degree peacekeeping, and still trying to hunt down Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi falls on their plate.